In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through learning a new piece of music. My name is Josh Gu, and after years of studying the clarinet with some of the best teachers from around the world, I am excited to be sharing my knowledge with you. So go to quickstartclarinet.com or check the description on this video to see all of the wonderful resources I have to help you reach your clarinet dreams. And of course, subscribe to this channel for weekly clarinet and music tips and tricks. So what do you typically do when you're learning a new piece of music? Whether it's a piece of music that got handed out in band and you're taking it home to work on, or maybe your teacher suggested that you start working on this etude or this piece or whatever it may be, what do you usually do? And I'm imagining it probably goes something like this. You get the music, you take it out, you get ready to practice, and you start playing it from the beginning. Maybe you don't start at the beginning, but you look for some of the hard parts and you start playing those. And I would argue that that is very much the wrong way to start learning any piece of music. It's so tempting to do it that way. Even in my own practice, I often tend to go about it that way, but it's not the most effective, it's not the most efficient, and I wanna tell you about how to do it better than that. So the first thing that I like to think about is the success formula. Uh, I have a video on the success formula and I talk about it in a few videos actually, but the success formula is this idea of having the goal, knowing where you want to be, knowing where you are, and then figuring out how you're going to get from where you are to where you want to be. When you just pull out the music, sit down and start playing it, you're where you are and you stay where you are because you're just playing it and sort of staying in that space. What we need is to have that end goal and know the target that we're aiming for when it comes to playing it. So the first thing that you should do when you start learning a new piece is listen to it and actually follow along with your music while you're listening to it. What this will do is it'll allow you to hear how the music goes and get that target of what you want to eventually sound like performing it because you're going to be listening to a good quality performance of it and seeing how what is on the page translates to what the audience actually hears. And that's going to give you such a clearer image of what to aim for in the long run. Now the next step sort of as you're listening to it and sort of in the, the first stages is to do a big picture overview and sort of analysis of whatever the piece is. So the things to be looking for here is the general style and the character. Is it a slow lyrical piece? Is it a fast technical piece? Does it switch back and forth a lot? Is it something in the middle? Is it something completely different? What kind of piece it is? Find the sort of tricky bits. Um, that's usually visually pretty obvious, but also listening to it can be really helpful. Sometimes there's things that don't look tricky that you hear and actually are tricky, or things that do look tricky and you hear and are actually really easy. So knowing definitively what's actually going to be challenging to learn can be really helpful. And also knowing what parts are exposed, especially if it's a piece for band, it's very helpful to know where your solos are. Even if it's not marked as a solo, there may be times where you're sort of exposed and you or only the couple people playing your parts are the only ones playing in the whole group or are the very main melody compared to a very background other parts. So those are things to be really listening for and analyzing and getting a good overview of the piece. From there, you're going to want to break it down into sections. And you can do this in a very formal music analysis way. You can try to find the actual form of the piece. Sometimes this is easier if it's a sonata, then it's in sonata form. If it's uh, rondo, then it's probably in rondo form. And sometimes it's much less straightforward, like for example, the Nielsen Concerto is not a normal classical form that's an easy structure to follow, um, but you can still get a sense for it. So however specifically or generally you want to figure out the sections is totally fine. You don't have to know exactly where each phrase is just yet, um, but you can sort of start to feel like, okay, here's a fast section, here's a slow section, here's one melody with this kind of 
texture and then here's a different one. Um, so just knowing sort of the general layout of the piece is really, really helpful because from there, you can start to break it down into smaller chunks. So you can either start at the beginning when you're doing these smaller chunks, or you can hone in on those tricky bits that you've already identified. Either way, it doesn't matter, but knowing where those little chunks are can be really helpful. And this is where you actually start sort of getting into really learning the music and really practicing. So for these little chunks, I do like to think of them as about a phrase. Again, there's nothing wrong with starting at the beginning. Um, so say say you, that's what you're gonna do. You, you pick the beginning, you identify just one phrase or even, even if it's half a phrase, two, four, eight, probably no more than 16 measures for that first phrase. Maybe you could do 32 for the first phrase if it's really easy and really sort of flows along. Um, but generally the smaller, the better. And then what you're going to do once you have that little chunk that you're starting with is you're going to audiate it. So audiation is a fancy word for sort of just visualizing how the music goes, but we're not visualizing because you can see the music on the page visually. We're taking the visuals of the music on the page and we're audiating it, so hearing how it goes. And of course you can do this by listening to the recording and that'll give you a good sense of how it's supposed to sound, but you need to be able to sort of create that for yourself, look at your specific part and be able to audiate that and hear it and hear what it would sound like if your part was being played perfectly with good sound quality, perfect rhythms, perfect notes, as very much close as you can get a ideal image in your head. This is sort of the painting the target of the success formula where the better image you can have of how that phrase is gonna go and the better you can hear it in your head, the easier it is going to be to play it. So now that you've identified the little chunks and you've audiated it, now in step five, you can actually start to play it. And you're gonna find that you may play it quite well for your first time through it, because you already know how it goes and it's just a matter of putting it on the instrument at this point. You may find that maybe you make a mistake, but again, you're gonna know immediately if it was a mistake because you already know how it's supposed to go and how it's supposed to sound. So you can be much more efficient and effective in fixing your mistakes because you already know how it's supposed to go. So you can play through it, that little chunk a few times, try to work out all of the details and that's again another beauty of learning it first and audiating first is that you're going to know how the dynamics go, how the articulations go. You're not going to have to add that stuff in later. It's already going to be part of the music right from the very start. And it's very manageable to do it in just those little chunks. Again, these can be as small as two measures, maybe even one measure of music that you do for, for the little chunk. Uh, and then from there, you just sort of repeat that process. Go on to the next little chunk audiate, play, fix, next chunk, audiate, play, fix, and the next thing you know, you're gonna have a lot of the piece down. This may sound not as efficient as just sort of playing through it and sort of like banging your way through it, but I promise it's actually much more efficient and much more effective because there's a lot of stuff in music that's very repetitive. If you've listened to it and done your sort of overview analysis, you already know where those repetitive session, sections are going to be. You can also make sure that you're really getting the quality on one of those sections the first time you do it, and then it'll just come back automatically and naturally every other time that you hit that section. So learning your music this way, I promise, is much more effective, much more worth it. Uh, I'm speaking to myself a little bit here too because yes, I'm always tempted to just sort of go through and just play through it and practice my sight reading through it, which is an okay thing to do, but it's really, really important that you're getting into it and actually learning how it goes, listening as much as you possibly can, audiating as much as you possibly can, having that clear target of how the music should go, and then it's just a matter of making the instrument do that, which honestly is the easy part and will be much more beneficial for you rather than throwing the instrument at the music, seeing whatever that gets, learning those mistakes and thinking that the things that the instrument's spitting out is how the music actually goes rather than knowing how the music goes and encouraging and working with the instrument to get that to come out. I think I've 
made these general points before. Uh, if you want more in depth on how to actually go through that fixing process and more of this, then definitely check out my uh, practice framework video that I'll put up there. Um, but I think it's just really valuable to bring up these points again and again and again again, maybe just for myself even, so that I do it more in my own practicing. But again, I really encourage you to do it in your own practicing as well. Leave me a comment and let me know if you try out this system and see how it helps for you. Uh, definitely like the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you want more clarinet tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.